I wanted to share something that I received as a gift from a man overseas. I saw pictures of this online and got super excited and wrote him. And he was nice enough to send me a couple of them actually to try out. So what you're looking at is a device that he printed himself on a 3D printer. And what it is, is it is a magnetic stirrer for doing water testing that will make this little magnetic bead inside there spin. And on off switch, there's an LED light that I'll turn on in here and this is your speed control. So we'll turn it on and you can see the light behind it, which I think might be practical when you're doing water tests because it's a white background and then some light might gives you a good light from behind. And then there's the spin. Pretty cool, right? So I thought, eh, we'll do an alkalinity test first. So I asked for extra beakers because it was coming from overseas and I thought, what if one breaks? But it got here perfectly fine. And uh, I'm told, you know, it works with the Salaford beaker as well, but we'll try it with this one. And normally I would do two and a half milliliters for an alkalinity test using the Elos. But this time I'm gonna go ahead and do the full five milliliters and use more solution for the test. And then we'll turn it on. And I'm gonna just have it spinning slow. I don't want it to spin crazy fast. I've never used it, so I don't know how it's gonna play out. And now we'll put in some drops. I'll give this a little shake. Okay. This is an Elo's test kit that I bought not too long ago from the fish store on the street. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we're waiting for it to turn a lighter color, not blue. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16. 16 is 8 DKH. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Eh, it's still got a little bit of hint of blue to it. So 23 drops, which would be 11.5 DKH. And we'll stop it. That was pretty easy. And I didn't have to sit there and shake the vial after every drop. How cool is that? Okay, so let me show you a little bit more about it. So it has a screw in the bottom. And when you take this off, the nine volt battery fit inside. All right, we'll do another test. I'm gonna rinse everything out and we'll resume. Salaford beaker, I was told fits, but it doesn't. It doesn't quite fit in there, not quite. Maybe he had a different size vial where he was. But I will use the glass one and we'll do the phosphate test kit. Get running out. We're gonna use their vial again. And we'll put in 10 milliliters. Just did a five. Ten the stirrer in there and then it just takes four drops of this which normally you would put the drops in and then you would shake for 10 seconds but I'm not gonna shake it at all I'm gonna let it stir and then we'll add one scoop of this which is the powder. And then you're supposed to let it mix for 30 seconds. And we could even turn it up a little bit just for fun. <laughs> Too fast. <laughs> and there's a little bit of a hue to it. Turn it off and we'll hold the beaker. Let's see if we can do this. Can we do this? I can see a little bit. My, I'm trying to keep the shadows off of it. And there's a tablet in the bottom. Mm, okay. 
Well, how am I going to do this? It's mixed. We could use the beaker, right? So you can see my phosphates are up a little. Probably around 0.1 right now. It's not too bad. It's always tricky with phosphate. Because you want it to be clear. Yeah, it's about 0.1. Okay. We'll do another test. This time we're going to do the calcium test. And I want to try this little tiny beaker from Elos and see what it does. Let's just try it with nothing in it first. Just the bead. The magnetic stirrer. Okay, that spins. And the beaker doesn't go flying. That's a good sign. All right. Now I need my instructions. It says to grab five milliliters of water. Then we need to add seven drops of A. I'm going to turn it on. Hopefully keep it centered. Slow spin. Seven. It's kind of six and a half. One drop kind of stayed on the glass. Then we will add a tiny scoop of B. Close this up again. Should we speed it up a little bit? Okay, that worked. Then it says to <laughs> add a drop of C at a time, counting the drops, until it turns from pink to blue. That sounds easy enough. One, two, three. I went a little fast there. Four. Six. Seven. Eight. Let's speed it up a little tiny bit. I mean, that's pretty close to blue. This would be nine. That's completely blue. So that'd be 450. And I didn't have to shake the vial. Okay, take that off of there and hit stop. This time I do the magnesium test kit. So I'll take the little stirrer, put it in the bottom. It says to use three milliliters of water. And I'm going to have to add a lot of drops until this turns from, you know, this A solution turns from red orange to green. And that's usually like 29 drops or so. My magnesium is always low in my tank, so I won't be surprised at this test but it's still fun to do it this way instead of the old-fashioned way of holding a vial. That's 28, 29, 30. Wow, I expect it to be green already. There you go. So 32 drops, right? Were you keeping track for me? All right, 32. We just have to remember that number. Dump this out. 
Gonna add three more milliliters and our little stirring bead. And now we need five drops of B. Add the powder. Turn this on again. Here's our five drops. A tiny scoop of part C. That is really cool. And now that it has turned pink, we're going to keep adding D until it turns to light blue. D. And count. One, two, three, four, it's getting there. Five. Look at that. That's light blue, five. We do one more just for fun, see the difference in color? Okay, it's more rich blue. We could call it six if you want. Did some quick math and double checked myself so I don't make myself look like an idiot. <laughs> 32 was the original, 26 was the follow-up. Subtract the difference, we get 26 times 50 per the kit comes out to 1300 PPM which is actually better than magnesium usually is in my tank. Usually it's more around 1200. I finally have that number up. So I gotta say, first time using this thing, numbers are great and I'm really impressed. I like how easy it was to use, how simple it was to do my tests. I got a nice sweet measurement on everything I was testing. I should have done nitrate, huh? That test kit, I mean, that vial definitely won't fit if you're using API, which is the kit I'd like to use. So I will eventually get a different kit. Maybe I'll get an ELOS nitrate just for the fun of it. My point is the little uh, magnetic stirrer is awesome. Best gift I've gotten this month. <laughs> so I just wanted to share with you guys and I hope you found it interesting. I have no idea when this is coming to market. I know that they're being sold overseas right now and I just had to give you a preview. So, cool. Thanks for watching.